Hazapu, Hazapu, Heru Nefer. Such a pleasure to see you on this wonderful day. It's the second day that we're going to be doing our Tai Chi Chuan Qigong, a little bit of meditation today, a little aha today as we get into the fast. So hopefully you're ready to go. Let's get it in. All right, y'all. So glad everybody's here. We're going to get it in. As usual, we start with our shiasha. We're going to jump right in with a star stance. We're going to get into the qigong and the aha. And we're going to get into the form. Okay, we're going to review the ward off right and left four breaths specifically because we want to get that in in terms of helping folks to strengthen their bodies and we, we have some newer folks that may be coming on joining us during the fast portion so it's a nice time to review some of the basics and then we're going to get into we're going to do the, the short form after we do that then you know we'll see where we go from there we'll take it light we know we're going to get our breathing exercise in we know we're going to do the wisdom from the sages of the ages. Just want to double check our time to see, you know, we're going to leave it open and see whether we go through the kneeling exercises again or whether we're going to review and get, really expand on our stretching exercises that we can do to help strengthen and open, open the hips a bit so that we can begin to get a little better, stretch the hamstrings, work the knees, which is done so that we can improve on our lotus. And the other way to improve on that is just to sit in it, okay? And to practice. So we got that and we're gonna begin working on that. We're gonna have some fun ways, some fun things to do around that. And hopefully folks will have a little bit of fun with us. How about that, huh? <laughs> so I'm gonna get ready, let's get moving. Get the chair out the way. Let's go. And as usual, we're going to start in our Wu Chi. So let's get it. Got to make sure y'all can see my feet back there. Wu Chi position, heels together, forming a 90 degree angle. Good, good, good. We're going to bow in to all the masters that have gone before us. We bow. Teacher to student, student to teacher. Awesome sauce. Pyramid hands. And shift right, step and left, heel first. Balance the weight, 50-50. And let's get to it, right? Open those hands into the Asara stance position. Let's begin.
Pyramid hands. Holding the golden orbs. Rotating the hands into oneness. Into the turtle. Out to the drawbridge. Point the hands between the legs for two breaths. Enter oneness. Rabbit through the shoot. Into oneness. Elbows. And pick up the pace. In the oneness. <clears throat> right hand on top of left hand, palms up, thumbs touching, arms and hands not touching the body, hands beneath the navel. Rotate the left hand on top, left hand facing the right hand, palms facing. See a ball of golden white light like the sun in between the palms of the hands.
into oneness. Into the turtle. Out to the drawbridge. Point the hands between the legs or two breaths. Into oneness. Pyramid hands. Drop the left hand. Extend the right. Trace the Tai Chi diagram. Stop, front and center. And then right hand back into pyramid hands position. And that left hand up to pyramid hands position. Shift all the way to the right, slide the left foot in the Wuchi. Let the hands come down, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, feet parallel, shoulders width. Into the cob position. Two breaths. Palms facing forward for two breaths. Shifting the feet as we get into the dua position. Left foot is forward. Right foot is back. Left hand out from the center of the forehead. Right hand out from the heart. Four breaths. All the weight is on the back leg.
Stepping back. Pivot. And swinging arms. Let him swing. Let them stop on their own. Make check your feet, make sure they're straight and parallel. Open the chest, stretching the back, sinking down. Last one. Check it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. Excellent work. All right. Now, Turn to the side with me. We're going to do our Tai Chi walking. Use whatever space you have. Feet parallel, shoulders width. Sink down, tuck the bottom. Get these hands here. Remember, the hands should be right out from the face. So you, they're out in space. You can protect yourself. I'm going to shift that weight. Get a little better here. Shift the weight. Pick it up, exhale and put it down, shift the weight, keeping the bottom tucked, bring it up, place it down. And then go as far as you can go. Then we're gonna turn around, shake it out. I know most of us are in some tight spaces, but this is a way to show you if you're in a tight space, you can still practice our art, okay? It also means that if you have a little more space, you can go outside and try this. Works just as well. This is the beginning Tai Chi walk. All right, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, we're gonna start in feet parallel, shoulders width. 
And we're gonna do our warm up exercise for the form. Warding off right and left, four breaths. So hopefully everybody's ready. Hopefully everyone remembers this exercise. It's been a while. If you didn't, weren't with us on Tuesday. So here we go, sinking down. Sunrises over the mountain and sunsets. We ward off to the right first. Hold here for four breaths. All the weight is on that left leg. And shift the weight. Now all the weight should be on the right. Sun rises over the mountain and sun sets. And we ward off to the left. And sun rises over the mountain and sunsets. And we'll do one more sunrises. Shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, excellent. Feet parallel, shoulders width is how we did that one. With the warm up, we're going to start here from Wu Chi position. Now we prepare to go to the right. All right, here we go. Sinking down, stepping left. We're gonna go through the whole short form.
Check it out. All right, we're gonna do the short form again. The chi. And sinking and stepping. Again, from Wu Chi, down, shift, and step. Excellent, excellent. Let's have a seat. All right. <sighs> good, good, good. On simple notice. Also known as crisscross applesauce. You want to be here? Give you a moment to get settled. We'll take the right hand, palm up, thumb and index finger touching. Resting on top of the knee or thigh, back and shoulders relaxed, sitting tall. Take the left hand, left thumb blocks off the left nostril, middle and index finger in the center of the forehead. Breathing in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Out. 
Fire breath. Deep breath in. Release. Switching hands, no breath. Breathing in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Fire breath. Deep breath in. Release. Both hands, palms up, thumbs and index fingers touching. Breathing in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Fire breath. Deep breath in, chin down. Release. Put the hands with palms down on top of the knees, breathing in and out. In and out. In. And out. All right. Let's get into just regular crisscross applesauce real quick. Get in here, whatever is comfortable for you. We're going to start here. Okay, nice and easy. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this left leg and kick it out. On the back, you see, left leg, kick it out. You want to make sure the back of the knee is on the ground. Take this right leg and make sure the heel comes right down the center of the body and aligns with the center of the body as best you can. If the heel is still is out here further away from the body, that's okay. You want to bring it in as, as tight as you can while keeping this left leg pointed straight up toward the ceiling, okay? So we're going to actually just nice and easy, palms up, turn towards that left leg and lay down. Stretch the arms out as best you can. Keeping the bottom flat on the ground. The toes pointed towards the sky. Breathing normally. You want to go as far as you can go. Some days will be better than other days. The main point is to maintain the structure, the proper structure of the legs and the body. Relax and come up. Bring those hands up in the air. Turn towards the right leg that's bent. I want you to hug the knee. If you can. You want to keep that left foot, toes pointed up to the sky. Bottom flat on the ground. And we're going to release and come up again. Turn to the center. Right, and we're going to lay down in the center. Extend those arms as far as you can. Want to keep that left foot still pointed towards the sky. And go as far as you can go. Just breathe normally. We're just doing this nice and easy stretch right now to help get us used to it. This is what we did on our last session. 
It's just to get the body accustomed. Come on up. And you're going to bend that left leg. You're going to extend the right. Same thing. Align it with the center of the body, the heel. Give you a chance with those toes pointed to the sky. We're going to breathe in and turn towards that right leg and lay down on top of it as best you can and stretch as far as you can. You do this every day, it becomes easier. Once a day, stretch goes a little further, the body gets ready. As you age, the body tightens up. And that's why we talk about making a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. Because as you get older, you take a break, the body tightens up. So you'll see me, the older ones, I was a little more flexible. But your body tightens up, depending on what you eat, what you drink, how much water you have, how you sleep, the kind of stress you're under, all those things matter. Coming up, so you don't want to get too hard or too down on yourself. Reach, keep the toe pointed to the sky, hug the knee, the bent leg, because you know what's happening and what's going on. And it's just a way for you to gauge the expectations of yourself to not push too hard. When you're pushing hard, that means that you've been doing this every day for a while and you've established a pattern and you know that you can go hard, come up, because you can do the same thing the next day. And then go down in the middle. And the main function of what we want to do is not what we do today. It's that at least what I want to do tomorrow is at least what I did today. And if I can build on that, that's what's important. So that's why we'll be revisiting some of the older tools that we used to help folks remember the basics, but also we want to be able to show folks ways that they can continue to grow and expand and push it. So now what you're going to do is you're going to extend this left leg so that both legs are out. And the goal is you don't have to be as wide as I am. The goal is to have the back of the knees on the ground with the toes pointed to the sky. Got it? Good. So now hands up again. You're gonna to turn towards that left leg. You're gonna lay down. And what you may find is that because that knee is not bent in front of you, you might get a little deeper stretch. And this is again, each position is different. Every body is different. And every day is different. So you don't want to judge yourself by yesterday. Come up. And if you are going to compare, you compare yourself to yesterday. Turn to the right and lay down to the right. And you may find you're more flexible on one side as opposed to the other side. All normal. All normal. And that's the reason that we talk about that consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. So that you have the opportunity to do this consistently coming up. And your body adapts. It will adapt to whatever you ask it to do. And down in front in the middle, use your hands so they can serve as a measuring point. All right. I like to use the body as the tool. You may notice some of the things that I share are way of using the body as a natural measurement. All of the, a lot, great deal of the science and technology are mirrors in the external world of the body. And so the body also is a microcosm. So if you understand and study the body well, you should be able to understand the external world. And if you have clarity of mind, we can use the external world with clarity of mind and a guide to help us understand the inside world, which is really accessed through the use of symbol and, or pictograph, I guess would be the best way. So those societies that had those had some of the greatest advancements and had some of the most amazing ways to teach the people. So now that we've gone this route, what I want you to do is bring the toes and heels together and the soles of the foot as far away from the body as you can keep them together. And then we're going to start up here again. And you're going to reach down and see if you can grab those toes. 
All right, nice and easy. Then once you lean forward on the body and drop your head and breathe normally. Just introducing your body to these positions, just a way to get you introduced to them. There's no stress, no pressure. Breathe in normally. Drop your head so you can get the full stretch. Right, now as you sit up and the arms come back, I want you to grab those ankles and slide them in a little bit to where your elbows are in the center of your upper leg. So it should be between the knee and the hip joint right on top of the groin. The elbow should be there and the toes, heels, and the sole of the foot should be together. And your hands are on the ankles. See me. You're just gonna press down, lean forward, and gently, see the pressure? Gently, slowly. Gently and slowly, as we age, the hamstrings and the groin, which is what this is stretching, become very, very sensitive and take a long time to heal. So we want to treat them gently, all right? All right, you're going to let the pressure off and come up. You're going to slide the feet back towards the body a little bit. The goal is to keep the knees at the same height. You're going to come forward again. You should feel that stretch in the groin. And just press down gently where the elbows are. Let the body relax. Tell your body to relax. Your body's going to need to start listening, so try it now. Don't try it. Do it. Work with it now. Talk to your body in loving words. I need you to relax. I need you to relax the buttocks. I need you to relax the hips, the groin. Breathing, using your bellows, breathing. So when I say normal, that means that we're working on bellows breathing becoming normal. <laughs> okay. All right, now you're going to sit up and slide those legs in a little further. And then come forward again. And then press, just gently. Just gently, do it gently. And we're going to come up again. And then to slide these legs in as far as you can, close to your body as you can. The goal, again, is to keep those knees the same height the whole way. Keep the body relaxed, sitting tall. Just going to breathe normally here. All right, now we're going to extend those legs straight out. The goal is to keep the toes, heels, and knees together. Some may, some may not. It's a little difficult for me after that position to sit that way. So I need a little space. Everybody's different. You may need to be out here. You want to get the back of the knees flat. And if this is where you are, this is fine. If this is where you are, also fine. Get to a place that's good for you. Because we're going to reach in here. We're going to exhale, reach for the toes. And if in reaching for the toes, you get to the knees, completely okay. You get to the shins, completely okay. You get here, also okay. I just need you to drop that head. Breathe normally. All right, come on up. Put those arms down, nice and easy. Okay, so we've done that. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a seat, comfortable spot as we get to our wisdom from the sages of the ages. Let's get to it. Hopefully everyone is feeling good and moving well. Here we go. And as usual, teachings of Patahotep and the essence of Tai Chi Chuan, the literary tradition. Here we go. Oh, wait a second. We'd already talked about, so we're going to be talking from the five character secret. We did calm. So this next one is called agility. If the body is clumsy, 
then in advancing or retreating, it cannot be free. Therefore, it must be agile. Once you raise your arm, you cannot appear clumsy. The moment the force of the opponent touches my skin and hair, my mind is already penetrating their bones. When holding up the arms, the chi, the breath, is threaded together continuously. When the left side is heavy, it then empties and the right side is already countering. When the right is heavy, it empties and the left is already countering. The chi, the breath is like a wheel and the whole body must mutually coordinate. If there is any uncoordinated place, the body becomes disordered and weak. The defect is to be found in the waist and legs. First, the mind is used to order the body. Follow the opponent and not yourself like your own inclination. Later, your body can follow your mind and you can still follow the opponent and control yourself. When you only follow yourself, you are clumsy. But when you follow or coordinate with the opponent, you are lively. When you can follow your opponent, then your hands can distinguish and weigh accurately the amount of their force and measure the distance of their approach with no mistake. Advancing and retreating, everywhere the coordination is perfect. After studying for a long time, your technique will become skillful. All right, teachings of Patahatep. All right. If you want to be to have perfect conduct, to be free from every evil, then above all, guard against the vice of greed. Greed is a grievous sickness that has no cure. There is no treatment for it. It embroils fathers, mothers, and the brothers of the mother. It parts the wife from the husband. Greed is a compound of all the evils. It is a bundle of all hateful things. That person endures whose rule is rightness, who walks a straight line, for that person will leave a legacy by such behavior. On the other hand, the greedy has no tomb. Well, thank you much for your time, your attendance, participation, mostly your presence. It is an honor and a pleasure to serve, to share these tools and techniques, particularly during these times, but no matter the time, I am grateful that I'm here and you are here and that we're here together. Thank you. And as I bid you, Hatep, we will bow out and we say to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow. Teacher to student, student to teacher, Ashe. We honor, respect, bearing witness to our eternal witnesses, ancestors, and then the great witnesses of the earth and the sky. I bid you hetep. Anku Jasaneb, life, health, and strength, and peace. Good day to you, Hirunefer. Anku Jasaneb. Amen re sutin nacher, aten re neb, and ank. Hatipu.